The engine build continues. Now that the case halves are together, things are moving along quickly. In this episode, we'll set the ring gaps, put the pistons in the cylinders, check the deck height, and install the heads. We'll also speak with the legendary Len Hoffman who crafted these heads. Let's get going. Okay, here are my four brand new cylinders from European Motor Works. Now they've got some like oil from manufacturing and we'll get that cleaned up. But the first thing I'm gonna do is get the ring gap set. Now I'm using KB pistons, which are hyper eutectic. Yeah, tough to say. And there's a formula for the top ring that needs to be followed because they need to be opened up a little more than others. In my case, the gap on the top ring needs to be 24.5 thousandths or thereabouts. And what we're gonna do is look inside the box and you'll see that there are a bunch of different rings in here. These are the, uh, the oil rings. It even says so. These are the middle rings. These are the top rings. So we're really gonna just focus on the top rings for right now. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a ring and we're gonna put it into a cylinder here. Just doing this with one hand so it's a little awkward. Uh, and then we'll take a piston and we'll put it in flat side first. And then I'm just gonna push it down until I get it kind of even, this part even with the top edge of the cylinder. And that way I know that the face of the piston is square to the cylinder and so will the ring be. Right here is the ring gap. Now straight out of the box, they come a lot tighter than I'm gonna need them to be. This is an 18 thousandths feeler gauge and it's even tight there. But it doesn't really matter because according to our calculation, I need to make this gap about 24 and a half thousandths. So what we're gonna do is take the ring out and we're gonna use this machine over here to file the gap open a bit more. And the way it works is the, the ring goes up against these stops here and you can do one side or the other, but only one side. So I'm going to put the ring against the support and the tool here and then move the grinding wheel towards the piston, the supported side. And I'll just keep doing that and sneaking up on the dimension until I get the proper ring gap in the cylinder. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this against the wheel, not loading it up too much. And then just, I'm only gonna move in one direction here. You don't want this at an angle. You want the cut to be as flat as it was when it got left the factory. Now I know I'm gonna be doing a fair amount of back and forth with this until I get the right number because you don't wanna to go too far. You can't put any material back. You really wanna sneak up on it and don't overshoot. Like I said, you wanna do just one side. And you can see that's the side I'm working on. It's shiny. If you ever get confused and flip the ring or something, you see the other one is still black the way it came from the factory. All right, let's give it a shot. We'll put the ring in here and then we'll grab the piston to make sure everything is square in the bore. Grab my 24 thousandths feeler gauge and it goes in pretty smoothly, so I'm about 24 and a half thousandths. Now I'll just file down the rough edge so the ring can float in the groove. Okay, I've got the number two ring in the cylinder now and you can tell it's the number two ring on this kit because it's got a little dot at the top. And we don't need a very special gap here. Out of the box, they should be about 15 thousandths and that'll be fine. So I just wanna measure them though because sometimes they can be really tight. You wouldn't want them tighter than 15. Deck height is a key variable in determining the compression ratio. To get a rough sense of the deck height, I'm gonna rotate the engine 90 degrees so I can have gravity work in my favor. I'll put a little oil here in the bushing. Then we'll just grab a piston. We don't need any rings on it at this point and a wrist pin, which has some oil on it, and start pushing that through to get it into position so that when we put it onto the rod, we don't have to struggle as much. Just push it through. Drop the cylinder down, and then I wanna make sure that the piston is at its top dead center. So it's coming all the way up. I can feel it against the edge of there. It's pretty much as high as it goes. Now I feel it going back. Now I feel it up and then going back down again. So right about there is top dead center. 
and it just so happens that it coincides perfectly with where the flywheel is on the split of the case. It's exactly where I would expect top dead center to be for this number two piston. Now, we'll measure the deck height, which is the difference between the top of the piston and the top edge of the cylinder. This is going to be a rough measurement because the cylinder head studs are not in. I haven't tightened this down. I just want to get in the ballpark and kind of get a sense of what type of shim I may or may not need. Now I'm aiming for 8.5 to 1, so factoring in my bore, stroke, and chambers, my target deck height is between 40 and 45 thousandths. For this rough reading, what I'm going to do is lay a straight edge across the top of the cylinder here, and then I'm going to use my feeler gauges to see where it's at. So given where I think we're going to be after my measurements before I sent the case to Len for decking, and after, considering how much he took off of the spigots, I'm going to assume we're at about 25 thousandths here. And you know what? That's just about right. What I'm doing is I'm holding this down to make sure that it's not lifting off the edge of the cylinder. And, yep. To get to the 40 thousandths or so that I'm looking for, what needs to happen is the cylinder's got to come up. Not that much, but just a little bit. Probably about 20 thousandths. And the way we're going to do that is by putting a shim at the base between the cylinder and the case. Now both sides need to be shimmed exactly the same way because the top edge of the cylinders have to be on a perfectly flat plane in order for the head to seal properly. All right, so now that I know where I'm at with this, I'm going to just take the cylinder off and then remove the piston because I still have some work to do with it. The easiest way to get the wrist pin out is to take a like a long socket. This one is a 15 millimeter that's um, wide enough to not go through the hole, but narrow enough so that I can still get into the bore with it and just push the wrist pin out that way. And then of course you've got to be able to get the socket out too, otherwise it'll lock the piston in. And so there we have it, the piston's out. And now it's time to put the oil pump in. Now I've got to clean it and make sure that it's spotless before I do that. I've got the longer studs because I'm going to go with um, a type one pump that's been modified for a type four. This is the Shadec 26 millimeter pump modified. And you'll see it's not quite as thick as the 30 mil pump that some people use, but it should be perfectly fine for this 2056. And it slides right down on the studs. But first, I have to make sure it's completely clean like everything else. I'm going to use some of this Loctite 510 gasket maker here. Jake Raby recommends this stuff because it goes on as a liquid and then it fills in tiny little imperfections. And in the absence of air, it dries to a semi-hard gasket. It's perfect. So I'll just spread this around the bore. Now I got my clean pump with the, uh, the hole in the top. gingerly put this in here. I'm going to clean this hammer up a little bit. So I'm just going to start it. And just drive it home with a block of wood here. You don't have to beat it up too much. It is a tight fit, but if the pump isn't moving, stop. You don't want to force it. Now I'll just take the gear and make sure that that's clean and the top is not proud of the oil pump because it'll hit the cover. So it goes in, make sure that the tang fits into the cam slot and it's perfectly flat. And now I'll just take the other gear and put that in the pump as well. Now one thing I definitely want to do is make sure that I got good clearance in the pump. I don't want to hear feel any binding go through full revolution. Here's the oil pump cover and obviously you need it to be completely flat so it doesn't leak. To make sure it's flat I'm going to make some guidelines here with a black sharpie and then I'm going to lap it with some 120 grit wet dry paper on a piece of glass and you can see here that there are definitely high spots. I'm going to need to keep lapping this until all the marks are completely gone. Now for this thin gasket onto the cover plate, 
I'm going to use Curl T, a really, 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 really thin layer, just barely there. And then with a really clean glove, I'll just lay this in and then put another very thin layer around the outside of this. These special oil pump cover nuts have a sealing ring so oil can't seep past the threads. And now that the oil pump is in, I can tighten up these case bolts around the oil pump. And then I'll just torque down the oil pump cover. For the cylinder head studs that go through the case, I put a little Loctite thread sealant on them. Now with everything about to happen here, I definitely don't want stuff finding its way into the engine. And now it's time to unload the dishwasher and get my pistons out. It's actually a really good way to clean them. Okay, we got our pistons. I already did one here. And here's our wrist pins, our rings, and then our uh, spiral locks. These KB pistons don't need to be installed in a specific orientation. They don't need to be one way or another. So what I'm going to do is put the KB towards the flywheel on this one side of the engine. I'll we'll take the spiral lock, put it into the channel, make sure it's got good pressure. I'm just holding it with my finger here and then start to work its way in. Then I'll just keep going around with a screwdriver until it clicks into place. Okay, so I've cleaned these already. And what we're gonna do is, um, they say it's spiral this in. So, as it sounds, put it in there and it goes in the bottom groove, oil groove. Make sure these rings are clean. This one we can spiral on and it's just exactly what it sounds like. Find the spot in there and then just let it spiral in. And then we'll do the same thing for the other oil ring. Now this number two ring has a little dot on top and that says that's the up direction. For these, it doesn't want me to spiral them on so I'll use uh, a ring expander tool just sits in there like that and then the tool just easily expands the ring. So put it on like this, get it lined up where it needs to be and let it go. You can see that they're pretty loose on there. Now remember I keyed these all two cylinders so this one is going to go in here and that's my number one ring. And we'll load this into the tool. This ring doesn't have to go on one way or the other. Spread it out, and there you have it. Now it's really important that the gaps in these rings aren't stacked on top of each other. So I'll put the number one ring at about one o'clock and the number two ring at about seven o'clock. And then for the oil scraper rings, I'll follow the instructions on the package and put those ring gaps about an inch from the seam of the oil spacer. Of course, you've got to clean these cylinders and you can see, even though they're brand new, there's stuff in there. And the reason why is that it just wouldn't make sense for people who sell parts to have them all cleaned before they send them out better that you do that. You can also inspect all the parts before they go into your engine. There's really nothing that's just plug and play. But that's the fun of engine building. <laughs> Getting this kind of stuff out of there. Okay, so this piston is finally ready to have a home in the cylinder here. And we're gonna use a piston ring compressor to get it in. What's gonna happen is this tool will go around this piston and then it goes around kind of like a like a sleeve and it uses this to tighten it 
down and compress the rings, you see that the rings are compressing. So here's our cylinder. And we are most definitely going to put some oil in here. This is pretty much the orientation that I want it to go in. Get this tight, not so tight that it won't move. Make sure that it's set correctly. And then what we're going to do is use the handle on this to push it down. Tighten it. So we can get it going in. Yep. And there we go. Now I'll tap the piston through a little bit more so that the hole for the wrist pin is visible, but I'm not going to go further than I have to. Now I'll clean this up, and this is where the shim is going to go. Now I know from before when I did my deck height measurement that I need a 20,000th shim under each jug. And I'm going to use Curel K2 to seal the shim to the jug. Okay, now we'll wait like five minutes or so for this to set up a little bit. We'll take the shim and we'll just drop it down and put it into position, ready to be put on the engine. It's best to start with the number four piston because the oil console and boss is in the way. So you wanna make sure that you can come in from the other side. But for the purposes of the video, it's a lot easier for me to show you the number two piston because there's just more room for the camera. So that's what I'm doing here. But it's the same procedure, no matter what piston you're talking about. Just a question of which side you have the wrist pin and the snap rings on. So I'll just work this one in and make sure it goes all the way, make sure it's completely seated, and then push the cylinder in. Now I'm using some spacers to hold the cylinder to the case, and I've got a one millimeter feeler gauge here, which is about 40 thousandths, and it seems to slide pretty easily under, so I'm at least 40 thousandths. So I'll try 1.1 millimeters and see how that is. And that seems just about right. It's just a little bit of a tug. So our 1.1 millimeter deck height equals 43 thousandths, which is just perfect. I was aiming for between 40 and 45, so it doesn't get much better than that. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that Len Hoffman decked the case and took just enough off so that I could get to exactly where I needed to be with just one shim. Thank you, Len. Now I'll just finish up the other cylinders and then take a straight edge on each side to make sure that the cylinders are dead flat and that the straight edge doesn't rock at all so that the head can seal properly. And here we have it, all four cylinders on the case. A big milestone. Everything is turning smoothly and looks great. We're ready to go to the next phase, which are the heads. Here I've got both of them. This is the right side top, and then over here we've got the bottom of the left side head. I can tell this is the right side because it's got the boss for the cylinder head temperature sensor. I was fortunate enough to speak with the guy who made these possible, and here's a little bit of that interview. Len Hoffman, thank you so much for joining us today. You are the undisputed king of heads for type four engines, and I'm sure a lot of other type of engines, but you're legendary in this in this type four uh, 914 community. I thank you so much for uh, giving us a little peek inside the magic today. Well, thank you, I'm, I'm, I'm humbled. And <laughs> happy to participate. Yeah, so as you know that I'm building a, a 2056, and I bought some heads from you, uh, which are a work of art, I have them right here. Uh, actually, got some more like him right here. Oh, look at that! We got two. We got two heads. We can bolt them up. <laughs> I sent you both of yours, right? <laughs> <laughs> so some of the options that you gave me when I ordered were um, coatings. So I wonder mm -hmm. if you could talk a little bit about the uh, the coatings. There's the coating in the chamber, right? And then there's this black coating around the head itself. So tell me a little bit about those. Yeah, the you know the coatings. Um, you know, we'll start with the ceramic coating. Uh, 
which is in the combustion chambers, goes over the tops of the valves, goes on the, goes into the exhaust ports, uh, goes into the exhaust ports and also coats the uh, exposed portion of the exhaust guide and it, it coats the backside of the exhaust valves. Um, so you, that ceramic will help protect the heads against heat spikes. The black helps shed heat. The black coating, exterior coating on the fins and all the ex non-machined exposed surfaces, it helps the head dispense heat faster. Thank you so much, Len. Thank I'll you. let you know how these run. I'll take a video of it first time. Can't wait to hear. <laughs> Stay on top of your tuning. <laughs> All right, here's a big moment. We'll take the head and line it up with the head studs and it slides right on, nice. There has been a lot of debate about whether or not to use gaskets between the cylinders and the heads. And I'm not gonna throw gas on that fire. On my build with my new heads from Ham, I'm going without gaskets and with Len Hoffman's blessing. Now here's the hardware for attaching the heads. And these nuts are special. They're M10 in terms of the threading, but they take a 15 millimeter wrench, not a 17 millimeter wrench. So they're a little skinnier, but they go on an M10 threaded bolt. I got my head torquing sequence from the Haynes guide. I'm gonna go to 23 foot pounds and we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll do this in three steps. This is where having a digital torque wrench is really handy because you can see in the readout when you get to like 14 or 15 or wherever you want to take it as an interim. Now we'll do the final pass. Next up, we'll be installing the valve train and adjusting the geometry. Please check out all the other episodes in this build series and subscribe if you haven't already. And please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Ian Carr for exclusive content, Zoom calls from the garage, and maybe even a sweet hat. Thanks as always to 914 Rubber for providing so many great parts for this build. I really appreciate you watching. Be safe and enjoy.